Hello, I'm Jeff Green, an employment law partner from William Fry. Usually around this time of year, we launch our 12 Days of Christmas series, a daily email summarising employment law developments. This year though, we decided to do things just a little bit differently and have a series of three short videos. In the first one today, I'm going to bring you through some important employment law developments from 2020. In the second video, just before Christmas, I'll bring you through some of the important cases from 2020. And very early in the new year, my colleague Ava Dennehy will bring you through some potential and proposed employment law developments for 2021. And so to our first topic. Just to point out that any of the issues I'll be discussing today are available on our website in greater detail. 2020 will of course be known as the year of COVID-19. And while this video will absolutely not concentrate solely on COVID-19, because a lot of interesting and important developments took place in employment law this year, I will briefly start with COVID-19 and make three points. The first relates to the EWSS, the Employment Wage Subsidy Scheme. As many people will be aware, the EWSS replaced the Temporary Wage Subsidy Scheme in September 2020. Importantly, it is currently due to expire on the 31st of March 2021. Secondly, employers are required on a monthly basis to check whether they remain eligible under the scheme and if no longer eligible to immediately withdraw. As regards redundancy, ordinarily an employee placed on layoff or short, short time for certain periods of time are entitled to call on their employer to make him or her redundant. That right was suspended by the government earlier this year. That suspension has been extended a number of times and recently has been further extended until the 31st of March 2021. Finally, as vaccines are now released and workplaces probably start to reopen in the new year, it is important to be aware of the return to work safely protocol and the recent update now called the work safely protocol. These protocols provide guidance to employers and stakeholders on how to make workplaces safe as they reopen. The latest iteration provides further guidance on things like hand sanitizers, ventilation, the wearing of masks, things that have been learned in the last few months. So if you already have been following the, work to, the return to work safety protocol and have your COVID-19 response plan in place, you probably won't see a huge amount of detail in the latest protocol, though it is still very much worth reading. If your workplace has not at all reopened and you have not yet been following any of the protocols, it is extremely important for you now to read the, the protocols and start to plan for reopening your workplace. An important development took place this year relating to SEOs, sectoral employment orders. An SEO is a set of binding terms and conditions that applies across an entire sector, such as the construction sector, the electrical contracting sector, or the mechanical engineering sector. A case was taken against the electrical contracting SEO and a decision of the High Court issued over the summer. This decision not just struck down the electrical contracting SEO, but struck down as unconstitutional the entire SEO regime. The judge, however, did put a stay of six months on the order, expiring early in the new year. And secondly, the government has confirmed that employers should continue to pay SEO terms and conditions, as it intends to fix the legislation. What should be borne in mind, however, is that when the precursor to SEOs, being registered employment agreements, were themselves struck down as unconstitutional, it took close to two years for amending legislation to be put into, into place.
there has not been a great deal of updates this year on the legislation front outside of COVID-19 related legislation. One important one, however, relates to the two-phase extension of parental leave entitlements. In September 2019, legislation commenced extending the right to parental leave from 18 weeks to 22 weeks. As of the 1st of September 2020, the right has been extended from 22 weeks to 26 weeks of unpaid parental leave. Any employers who have not yet updated their policies in this regard should do so. My final update for today relates to the gig economy. The issue came before the Irish civil courts, in this case the High Court, for the first time earlier this year. It was an appeal by Domino's Pizza against a determination of the Tax Appeal Commission. The Tax Appeal Commission determined that Domino's delivery drivers were in fact employees for tax purposes rather than self-employed contractors meaning an exposure as regards employment taxes and employers PRSI. Domino's Pizza appeals and the High Court went through the tests that most of you will be aware of, things like mutuality of obligation, integration into the workplace, right of substitution and the contractual terms themselves, before eventually rejecting Domino's Pizza's appeal. Now this was a tax case rather than a pure employment case. But what does it mean? What it means is that the next case that is taken by a gig economy worker or an independent contractor, whether it be before WRC, the Labour Court, or indeed the High Court, absolutely will bring this case up to bolster their argument. So those of you using contractors or gig economy workers should definitely read the case. And like I said, there's quite a bit more detail on our website about it. And that's it for today. Thank you so much for watching. In the next video, I'll take you through the important cases from 2020 and I look forward to seeing you then.